Sunita Conyers in the studio, Republican candidate for Alderman at 430. I'm going to be talking to Democratic candidate Michael O'Connor. Uh, Sunita, um, the way people interact is very important to you. Um, and, you know, show them respect and, you know, not pick, you know, people can disagree, but being respectful and debating the issue, you know, the way someone conducts himself, that, right. that, that's important to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. And if elected, you know, you, you're going to make sure that, uh, you know, you could do everything you can do to see that everybody works together as a whole. Yes. Uh, a, a person had asked me if I could, what would be the first thing I would do if elected in office? And I said, the first thing that I would do would be have a meeting with the Board of Aldermen and the mayor. And let's find out what ways do we communicate and what works best for us. Because if I know Blaine likes to, you know, me to come and come into your office and just face to face, that's how I'm going to communicate versus sending you an email and hiding behind the desk. So I think if we know how people communicate, we'll get a mutual respect for each other, despite whatever political parties, because our city issues cross party lines. It has nothing to do with, you know, any of our Republican or Democratic ideologies. So I think it's important that we understand how to treat each other, because the city residents realize that if we can't talk, you know, civil amongst each other, how are we going to treat them when they want to come before us with their questions or concerns? Well, if elected, uh, you may want to have a different level of communication and you're probably right with the email and texting and right. some people like hard copies some people exactly like to be told uh, in person and some people like to be called and communication uh, it seems no matter what we can do it always you know comes back to communication the way mm-hmm. you know people aren't being transparent enough right and uh i know that uh on all levels uh you know there has been efforts made uh, to be uh transparent and transparency is important to you yes it is and if elected, uh, you're going to uh, make it clear to those that you represent uh, exactly what's going on in their government. Yes. And then my thing is also to empower people to be involved in their government because you can't just go and vote and then sit back and expect us to read your mind. We're going to need you to either attend meetings, email, call, stop by. So the citizens have to do their part as well to almost like lobby their their elected officials and show up and say, I have a concern, I need to meet with you, and I need you to hear me out. Because at the end of the day, being that the Board of Aldermen have the legislative powers within the city of Frederick, we're still representing those citizens. We are their voice. Yeah. Now, is there anything that uh, really has, uh, I don't know, got your blood boiling that you would have said, I would have done this different, and this is how I would have done it. Is there anything that... that uh, jumps out at you in the past six months, year, two years that uh, has gone on in the city that uh, you would have done different if elected? I think I think overall people have to remember their place. I've always been taught by my father to stay in my lane. He's a military man. So you have to know where you stand and to say, okay, as an alderman, these are my duties and responsibilities, and to stay there and not to allow that title to get above you, and whether it's alderman, mayor, whatever it may be, to get above who you are and do something that you may not, you're not supposed to be doing. So I think sometimes people do step out of line, and I think that's one thing that's really gotten to me, that um, I'm a firm believer in you have to treat people right, because if you don't treat them right, they're not going to do anything for you or help you. And by doing so, that's going to really mess up our city. All right. Economic development is always a big issue in job yes. creation. And, of course, there's a lot of folks driving uh, out of town every day to find employment. Um, you're fortunate. You work here in town. Yes, I do. Uh, what would you do to create more jobs, or would that be a priority with you? Yes, it is. Because, like I said before, we have a lot of young people that do not have jobs, and we have a lot of seniors that do not have jobs at well. And that's another issue is senior and youth programs. Uh, One thing that someone has spoken with me about and I thought it was a terrific idea was when we start advertising and wanted to bring more businesses into Frederick, give them an incentive for hiring our own people. So if we continue educating our children and giving them the all the tools that they need and they come back, we can say if you can hire first within our city before sending out, you know, from someone in California or other states, we can give you an incentive. So I think there is job creation, and I think we do have a lot of open jobs. It's a matter of disseminating that information to all the community so people know what's available. All right. Uh, Sunita, uh, if someone's listening, give us your uh, last pitch of why they should vote for you in the Republican primary. All right. I am 26. I'm young. Uh, 
but I also know what it's like and the importance of collaboration and building the bridge. And I see that Frederick is growing, and I ask that you all take the time to get to know who Sunita is. Visit the website, www.votekanyers.org, and take the time to either give me a call and please exercise the right to vote on Tuesday, September 15th. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Hold on one second. Let me do a commercial.